What's cracker lacking, my fellow home dogs? It's your old pal Channel Pub with a little confession to make. So a little while back I made a fairly popular video on the identity crisis of Sonic the Hedgehog, how this character is really not in a good position at the moment because of games like, say, Sonic Forces, and that Sega need to bank off of the success of the new movie if they plan on any longevity within the Sonic the Hedgehog brand. At the time that that video was made, I wasn't feeling particularly good about Sonic the Hedgehog, and hadn't been for quite a while because of one Sonic game, being Sonic Forces, and everything regarding Sonic surrounding that. I tend to make the point of we had been waiting about four years for a brand new Sonic game and then Sonic Forces comes along and that's just it. A little two hour tops game trying a little too hard to be an edgy story for little kitties, that just feels like a massive downgrade from a lot of things that came before it. So 2017, Sonic's 26th year into his run, even though it's kind of his 25th anniversary, I just kind of thought was a bit of a flop. But I've spent a lot of time with different bits of Sonic the Hedgehog media, really trying to dive back into Sonic and just embrace everything that's coming his way. I've tried to think perhaps a little bit more optimistically about it. I've had many different conversations with friends who also like Sonic. I've watched a number of different YouTube videos on it that have taught me a thing or two. And I think the truth is I was a little bit melodramatic towards Sonic and the impact of Sonic forces. And I think as many of us will have been, like we're grown adults that are very passionate about this thing because it means something to us. The Sonic the Hedgehog fanbase is known for being a little bit divided in opinion and a little bit melodramatic about that. And I guess when you really appreciate a franchise like Sonic the Hedgehog, you do tend to get swept up in that melodrama and all that emotion. But the truth be completely told, it does seem like Sonic the Hedgehog is having a great deal of success outside of his blockbuster movie, which I'm still yet to see. I really, really want to see this thing. It's just I haven't had the chance yet. So in this video, we're kind of going to be evaluating what 2017 meant for Sonic and what looks to be the direction of the franchise going forward. So 2017 would see the first major Sonic the Hedgehog video game release in about four years. And that's not counting Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric. Sure, it felt like there'd been a little bit of a drought for Sonic the Hedgehog content between that time, but to be fair, we had the Sonic Boom TV series to keep us going. And Sega were obviously kind of trying to pick up the pieces of kind of a failed brand integration thing with Sonic Boom. But in interviews, Sega were stating that they wanted to kind of win back the trust of Sonic fans and really integrate Sonic as a multimedia icon. Make Sonic bigger and more than just a video game mascot. And that was kind of their mandate going into 2017, going into Sonic's 25th anniversary, going into the year of Sonic as they tend to call it, was like a cross multimedia integration of all things Sonic. And obviously this comes after axing off their other branch of the series, Sonic Boom. So it seemed like the centerpiece of 2017 for Sonic going forward would be Sonic Force. But let's not forget that at the same time as this, we had Sonic Mania announced as well. To kind of rejuvenate the classic Sonic brand as opposed to just having him cross over with modern Sonic. Which I believe was acting as a replacement for the Sonic Boom universe, which we've heard nothing about since the end of the second TV series. As well as this, in 2017, Sega cut ties with Archie Comics, moving the license over to IDW Comics, who would be relaunching Sonic the Hedgehog within the universe of the video games for 2018. These comic books would act as a sequel to Sonic Forces. Meanwhile, Sega would commission a plethora of new Sonic Mania themed content from Tyson Hess, which would act as a sequel to Sonic Mania, carrying classic Sonic's adventures over into 2018, with all new online content. Moving over into 2019, we would have Team Sonic Racing and the OKKO OK crossover with Sonic. Let's also not forget that all the while this was going on, Paramount Pictures and Sega were working together on the the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, originally due for release in 2019 but released later on in 2020, which evidently has people talking about Sonic and appears to have the capability of launching a Sonic the Hedgehog film franchise with high demand for a sequel and overall positive reviews, as well as being the most financially successful video game movie of all time so far. So if we look at Sega's overall plan with Sonic and how it's going so far, let's look at the first part of this pseudo-Sonic renaissance I guess. Sonic 
Sonic Mania, a low-budget game made by a group of devoted Sonic fans hired by Sega. This effectively cost Sega pennies to commission. The game was a financial and critical mega-hit. This was the Sonic game that got people talking about Sonic games again en masse. This was the Sonic game where not just Sonic fans were interested, but people that played the old Sonic games and never touched a Sonic game since. I think the majority of people, and this definitely comes across in interviews pertaining to the Sonic movie, the majority of people are only aware of Sonic the Hedgehog 1 and 2. Those are the two Sonic games that exist, and Sonic Mania is kind of treated as a big comeback for them. This had gaming journalists ranting and raving about Sonic's big comeback. If phase one of Sega's plan was to renew trust in gamers and gaming journalists and the public, then Sonic Mania did that single-handedly. And you know, to its credit, I think kids can enjoy Sonic Mania as well. I've made a big point about how newcomers to the Sonic franchise, there could be a new generation of kids eager to play Sonic, but they can't really get a grip on what Sonic is because there's so many different versions of Sonic going at once. I think, to be honest, they don't care. I think they're probably more open to different interpretations of the same character than we Sonic fans probably are. And considering that is the demographic that Sega wants to target with Sonic first and foremost, then it's fine. It, it, it's honestly like, kids are not gonna care that classic Sonic is now a different dimension as opposed to Sonic's past. They're consuming this stuff the way it's supposed to be consumed. You play the game, you enjoy it, you have fun. You don't think too much about it. So then we move over to part two, and that's Sonic Forces. A game which focuses much more on the modern Sonic side of things. Now, I'm gonna say this, Sonic Forces is not without its missteps, and Sega knows that as well as we do. Because there is a story behind Sonic Forces. It was supposed to be better than it ended up being. When Sega commissioned Sonic Forces, they figured, okay, so we're gonna make another game that's like Sonic Generations. We're gonna have the classic Sonic and the modern Sonic, and a new playstyle in there. You won't need much development time on this, just a year because we can just port over the old assets. We can just use the old Hedgehog engine on this, and just kind of spruce up the graphics. So all you really gotta do is take that old engine and make new levels, and then the avatar, it's just a matter of implementing the custom system and everything, but you can more or less take modern Sonic's gameplay and take the boost off. I mean, that doesn't sound like a bad plan since everybody loved Sonic Generations and it's basically Sega's way of making Lightning Strike twice. So they basically kind of rested on their laurels for a little bit until it became time to develop and then they realized we can't for some reason get the Hedgehog engine working on the next gen consoles that this will be released on. So they had to really hastily put together Hedgehog Engine 2 basically and build it from the ground up when they only intended to basically make an expansion of Sonic Generations. Which is why Sonic Forces is basically inferior to Sonic Generations in basically every single respect is that they had to allocate more manpower to making this engine so the levels had to suffer for it and the engine had to be rushed into production so it doesn't work as well as the previous one and obviously there wasn't time to do idle animations for modern Sonic etc etc. So they pulled it together about as well as they could and they just made a nice little game, a small game. It's a little package. It's a much smaller Sonic game than I think anyone was ready for, than I was ready for and they didn't release it at full price they embargo reviews, they didn't send out review copies, they, they knew what was up. Unless they repeat that mistake again, fingers crossed they've learned from this, this is not something that's going to happen again, and for what it's worth, Sonic Forces isn't a bad game. It's, it's fun, it's enjoyable. There are still things that they could have done better with their time, they could have just not bothered with Classic Sonic. Classic Sonic is there to kind of implement Sonic Mania into this to make it one cohesive narrative with Sonic Mania, so that it's like, it's not that Sonic Forces is the main event, it's not the Sonic game, it's Sonic Mania and Sonic Forces as kind of one little package. Sega nowadays tend to sell these two as a bundle pack and it makes perfect sense to me and it's a much more satisfying way of looking at Sonic's 25th anniversary. When you look at the two next to each other and you put it all in perspective, you realize that those two games together, you got one absolutely fantastic game and one perfectly average one. It, it's still two Sonic games and one of them really is that good. Sonic Forces did not take away from what Sonic Mania contributed. At the same time, while Sonic Forces was coming out, they also released a mobile version of Sonic Forces called Sonic Forces Speed Battle. This comes on top of a number of different Sonic the Hedgehog mobile games. With Sonic Dash receiving expansions, there was Sonic Dash 2 Sonic Boom, which was probably the best Sonic Boom game, and then there was Sonic Forces Speed Battle, where you could basically take part in different multiplayer Sonic races, in a similar vein to 
Sonic Dash, except it's not an endless runner, and you go through different levels from Sonic Forces, and some of which from Generations. And Sonic Forces Speed Battle is a really good mobile game. It's something that can keep your thumbs occupied, it can keep you kind of occupied as a Sonic fan, you can play as a number of different characters, there's lots to unlock, lots to do. So like, Sega have still kept us occupied between Sonic Forces and what comes next. And then after that, you've got the IDW Sonic the Hedgehog comic range, which rather than taking place in the Saturday morning cartoon universe, now takes place within the realm of the Sonic games, taking place directly after Sonic Forces. So Sega have now basically properly integrated Sonic the Hedgehog's presence in comic books into the Sonic the Hedgehog brand. It's now much more uniform, makes a lot more sense. That's one less version of Sonic now because the comics and the games are now kind of one and the same, basically. And this really works well because when I read those comics, I, I just recently read the Infection storyline, I'm, I'm reading that in Roger Craig Smith's Sonic voice inside my head. They're definitely written a whole lot better than, say, Sonic Forces was, but, like, it still feels like an organic sequel to that. It feels like an improvement, the next step up in terms of storytelling. I think they did the right thing, and those comics are selling pretty well. They're selling as... as as far as comic books go, they're selling fine. So it's just one more avenue, one more medium where Sonic is pretty much in the public eye. Now, online and social media is very much kind of the future of media, as far as many are concerned. Like, you can make a pretty penny online on, say, YouTube through ad revenue. And at this time, there was an absence of a Sonic the Hedgehog TV series with no Sonic Boom about. So they basically delved back into their separate universe Sonic with Sonic Mania and made Sonic Mania Adventures, which served as a series of online shorts that could be viewed on YouTube that would have ad revenue on them. They'd pull the Sonic Mania team back together so it's a low budget thing, devoted Sonic fans working officially for the project. And these were really popular, people were really loving the Sonic Mania adventures, so they kind of made Team Sonic Racing Overdrive to kind of tie in with the upcoming Sonic Racing game. And, you know, Sonic Racing games, they've been pretty popular lately, so Sega wanted to capitalize on that with a third game. It got delayed all the way through to 2019, but there was still plenty to keep people occupied, with Sonic Mania getting a re-release under the name of Sonic Mania Plus, which meant you could buy a physical copy of Sonic Mania on disc, but at the same time you could get it as a DLC for the main game, which would add an encore mode and new playable characters. So they were still doing fine with the games, they were kind of juicing Sonic Mania a little bit for what it's worth. So Sonic was really doing absolutely fine in the video games, he's doing absolutely fine on the comic book front now, and he's doing absolutely fine with online content. People are really eating that stuff up. What other mediums could they tap into? Well, music. Like, everybody loves Sonic the Hedgehog music. It's one of the things people really take away from this. So, as another branch of their online content, Sega started commissioning remixes from T. Lopes and John Sanui of classic Sonic songs. These songs would not go on to be part of a game, they are just songs for the sake of songs that you can listen to online. same time as that, they also released a Sonic Mania vinyl, knowing that T. Lopes' songs would be very, very popular for the brand. So Sonic now has a little bit of footing in the music industry as well, which is cool. So moving into 2019, there's more Sonic the Hedgehog online shorts being made with Chow in Space and Team Sonic Racing Overdrive to embrace a little bit more of the modern Sonic side of things. We've got Team Sonic Racing, which is, again, it brings the modern Sonic side of things all together in one new game with a new story that acts as a third expansion on a very popular Sega racing formula, and kind of reminds players of everything they love about modern Sonic. It's definitely Sonic-centric, unlike its two predecessors, Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing and Sonic and Sega Racing Transformed, because it acts as more of a Sonic game progression, I guess. So when you think about it, in 2017 we had two Sonic games, we had Sonic Mania and Sonic Forces. In 2018, we had Sonic Mania Plus. In 2019, we had Team Sonic Racing. So while the output, as far as games are concerned, is a little less than what we had on the previous console generation, it's it's not like there's a drought of Sonic games. Even better if you include Sonic Forces Speed Battle and the constant evolution of Sonic Dash. Now, obviously, there's one little hole still in this, in that Sonic has not been on TV since Sonic Boom. Obviously, they'd have reruns, but they want to get people talking about Sonic having a new TV appearance. And while there was no televised Sonic cartoon, we had Sonic getting a crossover episode with OKKO, OK which got people talking about both OKKO OK and Sonic the Hedgehog because Sonic was really well portrayed in this. And the version of Sonic that we had in that was the modern Sonic, so it was kind of uniform with the rest of the Sonic brand. So Sonic's doing fine in games, he's doing fine in music, he's doing fine in online content, he's doing okay on TV, 
And now what's left to do than have a Sonic the Hedgehog movie? Which we have, and it's a huge hit. So I'm gonna be real, there's things that I think could be done a bit better. I would still like a little bit more focus on the video game side of things, because I do feel like this big Sonic expansion that Sega's been doing has come kind of at the cost of a really good modern Sonic game, but you can kind of bet that there'll probably be one next year for Sonic's 30th anniversary. Sonic Forces definitely soured things for me, but that's kind of because it was all I was focusing on. I didn't really look at the bigger picture, and that was kind of Sega's goal with Sonic going forward now into this new generation, was just getting Sonic to be everywhere you look, and I'm gonna say they succeeded. There is a lot to love about Sonic the Hedgehog right now, and when I really think about it, Sonic Forces was just one misstep in an otherwise really good succession of Sonic content. I love Sonic Mania, I love Sonic Mania Plus, I love the shorts that they're doing for that, I thought the OKKO OK crossover was a lot of fun. Yes, I've got the mobile games installed, and yes, I play them a lot. The IDW comics are great, I'm super excited to see the Sonic movie because I've heard such great things about it and it looks really good. So for all that, fair enough, Sonic Forces is a small underwhelming game that never sold for full price. As a matter of fact, Sonic Forces is going to be going on the PlayStation Plus Marketplace for free next week. It will be free in the beginning of March. And for a freebie, it's well worth playing. Heck, as part of a bundle pack with Sonic Mania, it's hard to really say no to be fair. Sonic Forces wasn't really the beginning of the end for Sonic as I kind of have previously made it out to be. It was a reminder that Sonic can still let me down, sure, but it was just one underwhelming episode in an otherwise great succession of Sonic the Hedgehog content. Which otherwise gives me, a Sonic fan, a lot to be excited about for the future. I really hope that Sega do not repeat their mistakes that they made with Sonic Forces, and really do allow themselves lots of development time for the upcoming Sonic Anniversary game. And that we can get a little more new from it. I think, like, classic Sonic should just stay in that little mania dimension, and modern Sonic should just do his thing. But I get that they like crossing them over because the fans love it, and the kids don't really care, and it's another method of cross-integration or whatever. I just really like it to be in service of the game at hand. Now, there is still more to come for Sonic the Hedgehog. Team Sonic Racing is going mobile very soon. We've got Sonic at the Olympic Games as a new mobile game coming up. And of course, you can bet your bottom ring that Sonic and Mario will be crossing over again sometime soon, be it for another Smash Brothers or for another Olympic Games crossover. I am still hoping for that next big Sonic game. But at the same time, there's a lot to be happy about. Sonic has expanded into different mediums, and he's doing it well. So overall, I'm feeling pretty dang optimistic about Sonic the Hedgehog going forward. What do you guys think? Comment below and discuss, and as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, why don't you head over to channelpup.net, where we've got a blog page called Dr. Blogtopus, but as well as that, you can also buy merch, such as this awful t-shirt. But if you want to be a part of the super fun kennel club, why not hit subscribe, hit the like button, and in the description below, you can check out the links to my Patreon and my Twitter. I think that would be pretty sweet for both of us, what do you say, champ? But in all seriousness now, thank you so much for watching, my fellow home dogs. Have a great day, because you and I both know you've earned it. I'll catch you next time. That's a cute outfit. Did your husband give it to you? Because you could get a way better costume from Zentai Zone. Check out their range of custom-made, tailored superhero costumes. Ridiculously good quality, value, and customization. Link is in the description below, as well as my coupon code channel pup, where you can get a discount off of your purchase. And while you're at it, why not get your suit designed by my talented buddy Dan from New Blood Dan's Workshop? You can contact him via the link in the description below. Seriously, guys, you do not want to miss out on your chance to be your favorite superhero and feel authentic and professional. And you don't want to miss out on that Channel Pup discount.